today's best music. Magic 89.9. It's someone it's that uh, definitely has not lost the spark. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Paula Dodd out. You've seen her in television magazines. And yes, boys, you probably still see her in your dreams. dreams. Welcome to Boys and Elvis, Cindy Cornetto. <laughs> Hi, we guys. Don't usually, we don't usually clap for our guests, but we're yeah, clapping. But today, today we're clapping. Today we're clapping. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you Welcome so much for having me. Welcome to the show. How's everything going? You're in Manila. You're back. I'm in Manila. Yes, I'm here. Actually, sa background pala mukhang Manila. So sabi ko nasa Manila to. Huling huli no. No, hotel, hotel. Ah, hotel ba? Hotel, hotel ka lang. Hotel room, yes. Hotel. But hindi ba motel yan? Motel. Okay. Yeah. Social yan. Social, no? <laughs> yung mga wood panels na ganyan tones. Alam mo. Oh. Tapos may interior, painting pa. Interior design, de. Oh. Hmm. Saka warm lights. Saka may cove lighting, eh. Siyempre. No, pa- Cindy, uh, you, there's a the restriction on travel, you know, all over the yeah. world. And here you are traveling, uh, you know, to Manila. What brings you to our beautiful island? Well, you are allowed to travel if it's for work. So okay. if you can prove you're coming here for work then and you're Filipino, then you can be let in. But because I traveled here through Europe, from Europe, I had to isolate for 14 days. Many people texted me, called me, said it's not true. You only have to isolate for five days. Mm. It depends what country you traveled here from. And in my okay. case, I had to isolate 14 days straight, which was crazy. But yeah. I'm done. I did it. I'm good. So, so, so you're on day... Oh, so, you're done. Fourteen days done. Okay. Fourteen days done, and then how, how's it? Uh, how did it feel within those fourteen days? I mean, you were just stuck in your hotel. I was just stuck in my hotel. I was on my phone, on my social media, way too much. I got into trouble discussing things online. So, um, if you ever have to isolate, my recommendation to you and advice would be: stay off your phone. <laughs> Stay off your social media. <laughs> <laughs> you went no. You seriously went no holds barred uh, when you got in trouble. You're just like well, when I saw that, I was like, oh, look at that. She's answering everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, I was all by myself. I was so hungry for conversation, and there you go. That's what happens. Oh, just conversation. You weren't hungry for anything else. Nice I was hungry for mangosteen and mangoes. There. Just in I, case you have uh, there that you go. That's, that, yeah, I mean, you just said you were on social. You, you didn't eat. You didn't drink. You know, what I mean, like, yeah. I mean, what are you? What are no. you doing? Fourteen days. Like, I mean, is is at least like you know room service still available? Like, can you? Still, Gino, you know, Zoom jacks. Yeah. Zoom jacks. Let well, me tell you. <laughs> Zoom jacks. <laughs> I did no, fourteen days. Did that, that's Tony's thing. That's but, Tony's thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, so so yeah could you get room service or could you order stuff and then they'll bring it up yeah i guess that's what normal people would do but because mm-hmm. i'm a little bit crazy and i'm here for work i decided mm-hmm. to diet so i had like i have this keto service that delivers me and so i was oh, yeah. not eating oh, I was wow. not sleeping because i was jet lagged <laughs> You, so you, couldn't, combination. you couldn't have picked a better time to, to diet. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been really exactly. nice. You know, you're you're in a hotel stuck alone, 14 mm-hmm. days, you know, you can drink as much as you want or eat as much as you want, but you had to pick that time yes. to diet. <laughs> you do your yeah. work. <laughs> yes. I mean, that's how crazy us females are, you know, because you guys have to be rich and us girls have to be skinny. And let's all just remember like that. that that's like so that. old fashioned. <laughs> No, I want to be rich and you have to be skinny. Or both. Or both. Yeah, look what Tony is doing. Yes. Yeah. He's rich and skinny. And skinny. And Tony got skinny and now he's also able. He got rich before he got skinny. So hmm. <laughs> so now at least it balances out. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're okay. Yeah. We're, we're, we're working. I'm okay. I'm we're, still we're, working on the rich and the skinny part. So we're going to get there one day. Yeah, it's, it's, a work it's gonna take a while. It's gonna take a while. Because <laughs> Sam, rich is very subjective. You can be oh. rich with family, rich in love, rich in uh, friends. Rich in debt. Rich in, you can you rich can be rich in debt. Oh. Rich in health. I think it, it it it's a case-to-case basis when you've reached uh a certain point, I guess, for first for, for those guys that you know I mean, where 
you'll see people where they just give up everything at one point in their lives. Like, why would you do that? Um, the, the monk who sold his Ferrari, you know? Robin, uh, yeah, Robin Sharma. You know, what I mean, he's he's uh, he he hasn't sold everything, but I mean, the, it's a very well written book, exactly. Uh, but uh, you hear guys who just you know go from one extreme and just give it up, or they go on like a uh, 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 Jerry Maguire, they lose mm. it. You know, what I, mean? I, I think you have to have that balance. You don't want to lose that balance because if you do. Uh, you get consumed with, like, as as uh, Cindy said, like, if you are rich, but then you're not happy with yourself, with your weight, or you're not happy with something in life, it's 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 no it's no different than someone who's uh, poor, but happy, and ha- but happy, but content, exactly. but content. Mm. But you have. know how they always say, you know, I'd rather be crying in a Ferrari than you know crying in a street corner with no car. So there's, there's also that, you know, there there's are that aspect. I mean, if, if we're just going to be honest and we're just going to yeah, be like, you know, oh. I mean, there's well, actually, there are certain comforts that you can get. With. They, they actually did a problem. chart, they, no, they actually did a chart uh, Gino, they did a chart on happiness and wealth. So yeah. the amount of money you have, uh, it is, it, it reaches a certain point of happiness, but in terms of, I, I believe, uh, blissfulness, uh, yeah. they rank yeah. it really low because it never ends. You're mm. always, you can always, uh, you're always afford- working for more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you, you, yeah, yeah so you have to- they say more, more money, more problems. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's and why when I is it enough? Money. Enough. I don't know. I, That's why I'm okay with know. not being wealthy. <laughs> I yeah, I, I'm okay with no. I think it's a, it's a <laughs> life is simple. Is just we make it harder. I mean, if you get influenced by mainstream media, if you get influenced by by you know the 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 rat race into material things i think that's where you have to be able to find that balance you make more and then just live simply because mm-hmm. uh, if, as far as i know uh warren buffett still lives in the same house since 1930s he yeah has- or, um who was it was and he's it, still um, using the same car yeah hawaii i think hawaii oh no i think he sold that car <laughs> i think he sold that car but I, I know for a fact that he still lives in the same house that he's always lived in and i and i think it's just a re- it's just a matter of um, your your spending habits. If you you know, I mean, obviously, if you make more, you'll spend more. But I mean, if you can just live simply, and I think there's a Netflix show. Uh, I I I watched a part of it. It's uh the Minimalist, and mm-hmm. it's two guys that really live a simple life. So they've 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 given up their uh they were I think they were wealth, VCs. Yeah, I think they were yeah. VCs mm-hmm. or they were businessmen, and they decided to just have one jacket. One chair, yeah, uh, and they live minimally it, all throughout their life, and uh, they go around the world uh, for their tour, uh, promoting that book, uh, live uh, the minimalist, and 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 it's such a, uh, I guess, a it's an eye opener, peaceful, more of a peaceful kind of living because you're not in the you're not in the rat race of what to what should I buy. What should, mm-hmm. what what do I wear? Because you live, you lay, they ha, he has one hat, one jacket, a pair of pants, a car, a couple shirts, and that's it. That's that's you know. I mean, if if you can live along those lines, like uh, what is it? Uh, whatever doesn't spark, what doesn't spark joy? Me joy? Marie Kondo, hmm. Kondo. Marie Kondo. So it's along those same lines, but it's two uh, uh, American guys that came up with this show on Netflix, and uh, they wrote a book. Uh, and they're doing a tour, so it's it's a documentary on them and and how you can live simpler uh, and stre- it's it brings less stress knowing that you work just to buy stuff that you won't even use that you won't even need. How many stuff do we have inside our homes that we don't even use? Like I Me, mean, I bought new Havaianas. <laughs> <laughs> but I think with Sammy, your different story because you, you you're you know I mean you you ha- you're you're, you're your luho is is I think automobiles, right? And 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 that's what brings you joy. Motorcycles, uh, motorcycles. My so stress think, buster. Oh, yeah, I think oh, it's a it's a it's different for each person, you know. So um, yeah, I mean, look at look at Cindy. She's just living simply. She has. Well, what do I have? What do I? You you okay. tell you tell us you, you tell yeah, us. You, tell yeah. us. Yeah. See, see, you, you, you just speak. You okay, speak. Guys, you you speak. We listen. 
you're, you're gonna be so surprised because I've switched uh, countries and lived in so many different places and I've lived on three different continents. Every time I moved, I had to, I was forced to leave things behind. So I was forced to look at all my belongings and make a decision. Do I still want this in my life? Is it so important that I'm gonna pay for it to be delivered in a container to another country, to another continent? And more often than not, I would say, no, I don't need this. I haven't looked at this in the last six months. I don't need it. And you're not going to believe this. I'm sure nobody's going to believe this. But I own maybe six pair of shoes, one brown, one black, one white, one sport shoes, indoor sport shoes, outdoor sport shoes, and hiking shoes. That's wow. what I own. I own I own a winter jacket, um, an autumn jacket, and um, a jeans jacket for summer. That's what I have. And all of the, all the clothes I own fit into one into okay. one cupboard no one cupboard right. wow. most, most females i know they have like three cupboards oh yeah that's impossible yeah. or they have a room. Room. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah no i had this in the past and it weighed me down and even the time to get ready as a female is so much longer if you have those you know, hundreds of clothes mm. in front of you yes yeah. but mm -hmm. if you have a capsule wardrobe that's what it's called a capsule wardrobe so all your colors fit with each other you know, you've got classic styles that always go. They never go out of style. So you're not buying things that will be trendy today, but out of trend tomorrow. No, you go for the classics, you know, the solid colors instead of the mixed colors, you know. Yeah. And you, you try to achieve this classic style. And that's what you live. And my life has become so much better. And during the pandemic, I'm sure you would all agree that because the malls were closed for a long time, we weren't actually behaving in this mall culture that we Filipinos so celebrate and yeah. when you go to the mall every day all those colors and all those signals buy me buy me you. Yeah. it penetrate your subconscious right and by not going to the mall and by not having that and by just staying home who am i buying for who am i dressing up for for the zoom meeting all you need is a yeah. nice stuff but do you still do you yeah, still find you yourself Oh, there you go. Oh, so oh, slick. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I, think, I think slick agrees agrees yeah, with yeah. with all okay. of it. But I wanted to ask though, like I mean, I I know that like you know you you've you've transitioned into this you know uh, super simple kind of wardrobe um, setup. Do you still find yourself uh, like whenever you do find yourself in a mall, do certain things still call out to you, and you're like, oh. That would be this. really nice, but it just doesn't go with you know with with the idea of of my wardrobe right now. Or I don't need it. I mm. it looks nice, but you know what? I don't need it. Yeah. There is a trick. There is a trick, and uh, anyone who is engaged enough to do this, I'm speaking to you, females. Maybe some of you males out there. I have a mood board. I create a mood board with pictures off of Pinterest or the internet um, of styles of women uh, whose style um, speaks to me. And when I go through the mall and I see a piece that calls to me, I remember my mood board. And if it doesn't fit into my mood board, it's off limits. Oh. That's a great way to actually. Okay, so you're, you're not going to say bend the rules where like, you know what? Uh, but this I is deserve really nice. this. Yeah. I, have, I have to treat myself. You know what I did? Um, because I came here for work and I'm all by myself and I'm, I'm going through so many hurdles to achieve working here this time around because of the pandemic. I'm here without mm -hmm. my family, blah, blah. Um, and Valentine's is coming up. I went online yesterday and I bought myself a few nice necklaces mm -hmm. and I had them delivered to my home in Vienna. And I told Daniel, my partner, you just bought me a Valentine's gift. Thank you very much. It's <laughs> arriving tomorrow. Uh, please keep it from me until I'm back. <laughs> just nice. to keep myself. That's, that's, nice. That's super You're convenient good. for the guys as well, because yeah. you know that way we won't have to think about it, and it's something that you know for a fact that you already like. And a lot of guys, Gina, let's admit, a lot of guys don't money. think. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know what to buy. It's, just, it's mm -hmm. one thing not to know, but a lot of us don't that think. I don't like. <laughs> yeah, and then Baka he'll he'll spend a lot of money with, for things that I don't like, even like. Yeah. Right. I, I have yeah. to yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So it's not you are the ideal you are the ideal girlfriend. You know, what I mean, mm. uh, Lux, very minimalist. Lux. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. It's true because we have a hard time. I mean, I'm sure the guys they're they're all married, right? So I'm sure they go through their head, what do I get my wife? Like, what do I what do I have to get her? You know, what I mean, with with someone who has a a very uh, short you know, wardrobe list, uh, and, um, it very, a lot of things. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 She, she don't need shoes. 
He doesn't yeah. need another shirt. She doesn't need another jacket. So it's more of the simple things that you will find joy in that, that make it easier for us guys. I mean, if every girl thought like you and was like you, we wouldn't have fights. Why'd yeah. you buy this? It's too small. This <laughs> Life wouldn't be so simple. Why'd you give me this color? Why Why this color? I hate this color. I'm like, okay, oh, maganda oh. sana. Uh, you bought an expensive one. Maganda sana yung bag. Kaso, that's not my color. Eh. Pero yeah, maganda, this is not my style. Oh, my color. Oh. That's not my style. Eh. But you know, it's LB, it's Gucci, whatever, Balenciaga, whatever, Pucci. But it's nice. But it's just, you know. Uh, not so you don't, you're not, you've never had a signature bag. You, you I were do. never into it. Okay. I have one black, mm. one brown, and one white. Basics. And I bought the styles that I knew are still gonna be in style 10 years from now. Because uh, those bags last. If you keep them nice, they last. So I have one white, one black, one brown. And I splurged on a colorful one, which is red. So oh, okay. I, I have That's my options. I don't feel... Yeah. And as a female, when you go out, there is still this um, psychology that um, your, your designer things is like weaponry you know mm-hmm. like look what i got like i can yeah. afford mm-hmm. this kind of thing you know they still have that image about them and yeah. i don't want to run around like i don't belong so there's a certain image i do have to adhere to because of the work i do so mm-hmm. i try to keep those purchases and i purchased them years ago and they've been with me it's four it's four louis vuitton bags and it's yeah. black white brown and red and that's it Ooh, that's amazing not, you know you know the funny thing is a lot of a lot of i'm not saying everyone but a lot of women out there will always use that argument like if you ask them why are you gonna buy this expensive bag oh because this will last forever yeah you can use this for 20 years a couple of months later they're buying a new bag and it's like how many like i thought that was gonna last you for like 10 20 years yeah but yeah. this will also last another 10 20 years and then it just goes on and on and on and on yeah it never um, ends but like we always say, like see DJ Tones, always in the yeah. Balenciaga t-shirts, the Gucci, whatever. The and we're still stuck with, and we're, we're still stuck with Uniqlo. Uniqlo for life. Oh, we're still stuck <laughs> with the basics. I swear. <laughs> see, that, that's what you got to do because uh, it's just so have, easy like that. Oh. If you have six, I think Tones has 600 shoes or something. I don't know. I don't even know. What's <laughs> wow. Well, I guess yeah. it's also the same thing with guys. Uh, I mean, yeah. also with sneakers uh, as opposed to women with bags. Is that, okay. I know, like before, like the whole pandemic, uh, like when we used to get sneakers uh, a lot, um, Doc would always say that, uh, hey, you know, that's the same exact sneaker. It's like, no, yeah. it's a different color. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, like, the no, laces are that? different. Oh, exactly. Don't you see the detail? Yeah. No. Like Does it say, no, no. <laughs> but question, question, Cindy, if you have three bags or four bags and four or five pairs of shoes, how many bras do you have? How many underwears? Do you have one, two underwears? Uh, your undergarments? Um, this is this is so going to kill your vibe because I'm such a practical, pragmatic person. I've got a nude set, like mm-hmm. a nude bra, a mm-hmm. black bra. And I've got those in either push-up or, you know, I don't know if you know the difference. There is a cup and yeah, a soft cup, yeah, yeah, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, so I, it, it depends I, on what dress. Point. Mm. You've seen a few. What, what year you? Yeah, yeah. Tony's I mean, an expert. You know, I, I, I've seen a in, few. <laughs> in in, in reality, I believe yeah. bras are unnecessary. You know, as long as Amen. you still got perky ones, yeah. then yeah. I mean, you know, I recently when I was in isolation, I posted a picture into my stories, which was me waking up in bed. Of course, fake, but you know, yeah. just for content. Yeah. Woke up like and this. I was, yeah. <laughs> I was wearing. Um, a neck cliche, you know, like some some nightgown, and yeah, okay. somebody. I mean, many people, many people responded to this, but one person in particular, a male, um, mm. said, "Nice, but is the nipple really necessary?" So I was shocked. I went yeah. back to the picture. I was like, "Oh my goodness, maybe there was a nip slip." Right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. So I went back, and what I saw, you're not gonna believe it, Slicker. It, I saw the imprint of my nipple. That's oh, what he was offended okay. with. He was offended with my imprint of a nipple. And he asked me if the nipples would be necessary. And I answered back. I said, my nipples are so necessary. I even have two. Boom. Yeah. That's <laughs> how you do it. There you go. That's <laughs> how you clap back. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, I never understood. This, 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 you this, have two as well? Uh, he didn't yeah, appreciate no. the, the, the whole photo. And, He's like... <gasps> mine mine actually work. Yours don't. Like mine actually have a purpose. Yours yeah. are just left over from evolution. Oh, you know, we, we can lactate too, you know that. Some guys lactate. I know. So, 
Oh, no, so yeah. how often yeah. does that really happen though? Yeah, it's really <laughs> rare, you know, it's really rare rare. I, I always try to I always try to press mine and see if <laughs> anything comes out, you know. Oh, like Ben Stiller, uh what's that? Meet, meet the family. <laughs> meet the Falkers. Yeah. <laughs> you, make good, you make a good point, uh, Cindy, because there is a free the nipple movement in the US. You know, a lot of yeah. women protest and 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 uh uh fight for their right to not wear bras because it, it's actually detrimental to a lot of the, the women's health wearing yeah. bras, you know. Um, I, I think it was just a selling point to to, to market it for to women, market it. to market yeah. it. You know what I mean? Definitely. You know, it, it, it's just, I, if if I had a choice, I would, in, I would rather have women just wear the nipple tape, no bra, just the nipple tape because I've seen a few women, they have this gel now. It's really cool. So it just sticks on and oh, then you just... Oh, is this the one that looks like a chicken fillet? Yeah, well, there's yeah. different. Damn, yeah, Gino, <laughs> chicken fillet. No, 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 bro. Chicken you, you, you wait for it, Sam. When you're married, you'll get to buy yeah. stuff like that. Eh. Then yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, you go, you buy. You, you don't buy. have to no, be married, Gino. Yeah. You know? Gino, you don't have to be married. Yeah, you don't have to be married. You don't have to be married. Just depends on how comfortable you are. They always leave it in the toilet because it's. Because there are certain dresses that you can only wear that with, like. Yes. Yeah, 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 the backless you can't show the strap, uh-huh. and it's like, yeah, yeah. so like, it's interesting. I, I think, so many- I think, I think with Asia, it's it's a bit different. We're more of a, especially in the Philippines, particularly, is is we're very conservative, conservative, but we're not. But we're kind of fake conservative. We're, we're, oh yeah, we're, we're, I mean, that's we're, that's yeah. we're fake conservative. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the word. You know, I mean, we're very judgmental. You know, when it comes to stuff like that, like. It's okay for others, but if we're dating that person or if we know that person, it's not. We wouldn't want them to do that. So, um, it, it's okay to to like the photos on Instagram, but if it's your girlfriend wearing it, it's a no no for some. Not for all, but for some. So it, it's a, it's, it's a, it's it's a, it's a hypocrisy basically. Mm. I think that also falls on just being um, possessive. Because it's kind of like, you know how a lot of the guys out there will have that whole um, mentality of, I can see it, but I don't want the other guys to see it. You know what I mean? So that's why like, oh, you have to cover up because I'm the only one who's supposed to, like you're, in a nutshell, what it's really trying to say is you are my possession and I don't want other people to enjoy my possessions. Did you ever go through that, Cindy? I mean, uh, obviously, you know, in the past where a guy like, say, saw you as hot, that was start going out. He's like, oh. By the way, you have to call I, had a boyfriend. Yeah. I had a boyfriend when I was uh, very young, um, mm-hmm. before I came to the Philippines in Austria. And he would get jealous if he saw me put on mascara to go to school. And he's like, why do you need mascara in school? And I was like, why not? But yeah. actually, you know, that's not what I want to talk about. I want to actually shock you with something else. In mm-hmm. Austria, where, I, where I'm from and where I currently live again, um, there are females left and right of me, my same age, who are starting to let their armpit hair grow. Oh yeah, and that's oh, yeah. that's yeah. a that's mm. there. Mm. Like I can't like no that no that I, I you're not gonna cross yeah, over that, the bridge. That, that, you're, you're not gonna get on that trend. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. How about you guys? Have you um um uh, experience? You know, experience uh, I mean, if it's just for preference sake, I would rather that it doesn't grow. But if if it did, they, they, well, what can you do? You know, mm. if you're if you're in love. <laughs> I mean, I went to a girl. Uh, I went to a school here with a girl that actually never shaved her armpits. Um, yeah. Helen Stoyakovic. I can even remember because I was shocked. Yeah. You just uh, you just <laughs> let her name out. It's, out okay. Okay. it's okay. It's in Canada. <laughs> that was, yeah, that's in Canada. So uh, nice. nicely done. Nicely done. Her 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 living in uh, her living in I mean I believe Slovakia and yeah. her moving to to Canada at such a young age, they didn't. They didn't teach her, you know. Yeah. It wasn't taught in 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 their culture. It I wasn't guess, the norm mm-hmm. yeah. in her yeah. family to shave her armpits. So she had more hair than me. I yeah. have no yeah. hair, you know. I mean, yeah. so um, have I dated someone? No, I haven't. But I've I've been to China where they also in in some provinces yeah. where yeah. Uh, they, they just have let spakuls. it out. Yeah, yeah. In, in the spakuls, you'll go in and they have a full set of hair, like it's like a yeah. bush. And I'm like, whoa, this is. It's it's a. I remember off. that one place we went to, Toads. Uh, <laughs> that was we were walking around. The girls, she was showing her armpits that they were clean. Yeah. Like no hair, no hair. 
Oh, in Lisboa. Yeah. Yeah. That I was, think that's yeah. really, that, that's really more like, of a huh? okay. preferential Congrats. thing. I mean, it should be a preferential thing. Like if you're into it, sure. If you're not into it, that's fine as well. Uh, you actually start seeing it on Hollywood already. Like if, if you recall yeah. um, Deadpool 2. Deadpool 2, uh, Zazie Beats was there. And there was actually a scene where you could see that she she had grown out her hair. And, like, you know, I'm sure that with Hollywood budget, like, if they really wanted that out, they could have taken it out with CGI yes. or whatever, or even asked her to do so. And even um, uh, Emily Ratajkowski, right? Like, she posted that on Instagram yeah, she grew a couple a few. of months back. Mm-hmm. Like she, yeah. she grew it out. So, I guess it's actually, there's a famous yeah. there's a famous Japanese model in New York City now. And Dayao Yaka, Yaka something. And, and, um, I was looking through her photos because um, she's a um, she's a content creator and um, uh, she's she's basically a stock trader. And yeah. I was yeah. like, oh damn! She actually posed in one of her in her in for her Adidas yeah. her Adidas yeah. shoot. She had her arm up with she had a, a I guess a, a sports bra, and she goes, "I'll shave when I want to." Yeah, and I was like. Damn, girl. Oh, that's so powerful. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, is it like, down the law? Yeah. yeah. I, she goes, why Why is it that when men grow their armpit hair, you know, fine, women don't fine. complain. Or yeah, if they yeah. shave their armpit hair, it's okay for them, you know. But when it's, when it's a girl that doesn't, why do we have to force ourselves every day to, 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 to be in a certain mold <clears throat> for you guys? And um, she said she wasn't having it. So she grew out her hair. I mean, for me, my conditioning is I grew up knowing that, you know, most girls don't have hair. Um, so is it a turn off? Um, probably if I haven't met the girl and I get to know her and then she grows out her hair it would be okay. But to meet a girl, is it a turn on? No, it isn't for me. But I mean, you know. I think it goes both ways, right? Like mm. if we don't want to be patterned anymore and have to fall into a certain image that the previous generations created, you know, then yeah. we also have to stop applying that image onto you guys. Because yes, females still nowadays yeah. expect mm-hmm. so much from you guys, you know. I know females who expect to marry and relax because that's what they believe the man is supposed to do. Support yeah. you, feed your children, feed you, feed your lifestyle for the rest of your days, right? And yeah. many women have not let go of that image yet either. So I yeah. think it really goes both ways, no? Mm-hmm. Yeah, or even even something as simple as, I remember before, like, I, I, I met, like, a, a few friends at a bar, are these and, your friends? And, 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 no, no, your like friends. Legit, legit friends, legit <laughs> friends. We, we we're, were just checking. If I, if I recall correctly, we were in one of your bars, you know, like one of the many yeah. bars that you have in Metro Manila. And and I remember, so, you know, the guys, like, we were all talking. We were like, okay, let's get a bottle. And and some of our friends who were girls, they were like, oh, I didn't even bring a wallet. And I'm like, how could how could you not bring a wallet to a bar? And they're like, oh, watch, like, I don't, I don't have to spend a single thing. And like, I was amazed. <laughs> I was amazed. I, know, amazed. You're, at, I, the the girls you hang out with. I, know, I know those girls you're hanging out with. Yeah, Gina. but, at, but at the these same are the time, girls that just walk by the table like, hey, how are you? Yeah, and it's, then they steal a drink it, or they take the bottle. I was the same bottle on the next day. Oh, 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 <laughs> wait. Wait. Apples. <laughs> Tony is the smart one. He'll he'll assign one of us. Hey, hold hold the bottle. Hold the bottle. Mm-hmm. Uh, like okay. I was I was amazed because I mean obviously like that still boils down to to how charming you can be. And I mean obviously like if women can do it, I'm sure some men out there could could get away with that too. Mm-hmm. But like at the same time, like it kind of just hit me in a way that like okay, this doesn't really do much for equality, does it? Because like you know as 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 guys like it's. When was the last time you were ever at a club that you didn't own tones uh, where where you went without your wallet and you were okay? Because you know that you're going to end up spending, though. No? Never. No, yeah, he, he, doesn't need, he doesn't even need a wallet. He, he just has his clip for his uh, credit card. So he's mm. good. But okay, just, I, 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 just, I have to say something. Hmm. If any females are watching, especially if you're a young female and you're just growing up right now, please... You don't want to own anyone, anything. If you keep taking things from a man, he's sooner or later going to expect something. You don't want to have an angry opposite of you who is going to be pushy with you and maybe even cross lines. You know, you just, 
you don't want to own anything to anyone just be your yeah. own like just have your own stuff have your own shit yeah. own your own shit do your own thing <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah and yeah. i and i think uh, that uh it happens in different cultures cindy where you you'll see it you know i mean it's it's a, it's not just in the philippines per se but uh, in the middle east as well you know i mean it's v- the guy runs things the guy oh, yeah. is is, mm-hmm. is the one who dictates what you wear how you act and and it, we've seen you know we've seen in the news until now it's the 21st century and women are being penalized for just speaking out you know or yeah. just trying to yeah. wear what they want to wear and it's and it's and you know it, it's like 10 steps forward and 20 steps back you know and and we and women all over the world are are, are trying to you know you know break that glass ceiling as we've always talked about so many years it's it and it's only now that we're seeing female leaders of countries and they're doing very well yes. mm, yeah. very well new zealand so, new zealand yeah, new zealand mm-hmm. yeah. oh yeah definitely you know it, it's it's number one on the list of places to live right so yeah i, um, I so want to move there i so want to move to new zealand but really? i mean you mentioned that you've been to so many different in. countries already like, like, why not, why not? <laughs> New Zealand, wow, slick. You're up me. I was quiet. I'm quiet. Let's go. Let's go. Alam ko si Slick Plami plano eh. Lumipat sa New Zealand eh. Report in every port. <laughs> you know it. But what the... Uh, give me that mentality. I, I'm just curious. How did you come about to get that mentality? Was it... Was it because you've well, you you're well traveled, you're you know what I mean you're you're very cultured, in a sense of owning your own, you know, being comfortable in your own skin. While other women, you know, I mean, they have uh, they have a, they have uh, this thing called uh, Sugar Baby. You know, what I mean, the mm-hmm. Sugar Baby website is where women are actually looking for a guy mm-hmm. to 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 support them to financially, sponsor, you know. uh, to to give their time and 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 i don't know what else but in 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 exchange for goods and services i would think you know i mean that that website well, is there see, i think any kind of service nowadays that you are looking for you can find i mean we are so you know with with the online community with internet and with everything becoming so multifaceted you can find whatever urge you're looking to to please you can find right that doesn't mean that it's the nice or the correct thing to do i also believe that those older guys who are paying for sugar babies and keeping Mm -hmm. them up they're victims and the sugar babies are abusing the system and their need right and as long as they're gonna be okay okay with paying the sugar babies the sugar babies are con- gonna continue living off of that money that doesn't make it okay that doesn't make it okay at all the the reason why i'm more outspoken today about this than before because i have two daughters one is four and one is ten and i don't want them to go to the club and get a drink from anyone i don't mm. want them to get a bottle that's already open no 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 yeah. no no you have oh, to watch dangerous. even the barkeeper yeah, yeah. Yeah. what he opens and what he puts in your drink okay mm-hmm. that's very like for me as a mom of two girls that's yeah. very important and not owing anything to anyone also came from my experience in show business because mm. people will give you a helping hand and then afterwards they turn around and say you owe me now and mm, i'm like yeah. uh, 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 snap what i agreed no yeah. so was that even if was people, that did he, did he did he give you a helping hand and always. Uh, you, you always, always. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh no it's but sneaky. look at her now huh? <laughs> thank you thank you slick rick you made me thank you <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you have the two daughters, and uh, so what's your tip also for, obviously they're 10 and 4 years old, they're very young, you know what I mean, but how, how do you, how are you going to be raising them, and, and what's your tip for other women that are, that are viewing this and listening, that uh, what are some tips that you can give them, being in the industry before, who, who, who want the lights, the camera, the fame, the glitz, the glamour, um, mm-hmm. the light. Okay, first, they like, okay, first they, of all, the, the, first of all, the number one advice I have, be it showbiz or non-showbiz, or be it just my 10-year and 4-year-old daughter, um, you are the master of your own happiness. Don't look yeah. for happiness outside of yourself. 
don't look for happiness in the glitz and glamour and the lights of, of you know, the fashion industry or the showbiz or the, the cinema and TV world. Don't look for the admiration and love from another person or, you know, from a group of people or your new clique or a new people of friends, you know, like you are the master of your own happiness, no one else and nobody owes it to you to make you happy. Only you owe it to yourself to make yourself happy. So that's what I always tell my both girls. You're the master of your own happiness. That's first and foremost. Mm. And how do you handle the, I guess, them growing up? Well, one is 10, so it's going to, you know, I mean, a couple more years, she'll be a teenager. Peer pressure is a big thing. <laughs> You know, I mean, especially, you know, once they get into school, once they're in school. And once some, have, once a guy starts making porma, yeah, you know how it is, yeah. right? I mean, also yeah. with social media, um, uh, is that it's just so prevalent now. It's just easier to talk to, say, a little kid talking to, you, to your daughter, right? Well, see, I have the opinion that, because I have friends who do not allow their kids to go online or have an iPad or have a phone. Yeah. And uh, my kids are not on social media yet, but you can see them on my social media. And I do allow them to go onto their iPad. They have one day in the week where they're allowed on their iPad and they know that on the other six days of the weeks, uh, of one the, week, day? the iPad is off limits. One day. Wow. But one on that day, day, they can do whatever they want wow. on their iPad. They can watch a movie. Arthur, they can play Arthur, games. Yes. Six, seven days a week. <laughs> what? <laughs> hmm? The archer, seven days a week. Say the dad is also on the, online. <laughs> hey, Archer, I'm, I'm watching TikTok videos. You watch with me. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Okay, that's pretty intense. I mean, how how do your kids feel about it? Like the whole, you know, uh, you know, one one day, one, one day out, of, at, out of the week. ten years old. That's a yeah, little, ten years old. Probably, four, four yeah. you can still kind of understand, but at ten, like she has yeah. not known it any other way. She was, she doesn't know it any other way ah, from the very start. Why. We got yeah. her an iPad. That was it, and. Uh, we also are very selfish in a way. We made iPad Day Sunday because yeah. we know that we have no work on Sunday and we want to relax. And yeah. so we know that on that one day, they will be so engrossed with their iPad because they don't have it. For six days, yeah. they didn't have it. So on that one day, oh my goodness, that iPad is the nanny. I can do whatever <laughs> I want all mm. Sunday. They're not going to look for me. And that's yeah. the system. I know it's a little bit hypocritical because they see me create content for my yeah. online persona all of the time. So I had to explain to them it's my job. And yeah. I also don't want them to grow up without the knowledge of internet and without right. the knowledge of social media because once they hit that age where they can enter that, they'll be so shocked with it and overwhelmed with it. And I didn't want that. I wanted them to be well versed mm -hmm. in the internet world. And so totally taking that right away wasn't possible. And another trick that we have is when we're on a journey, on the plane if we're traveling on a trip the ipad of course is allowed yeah, yeah okay but it's also nice is that the, your your kids i mean your your girls uh they, they've gotten out they, they've seen the world i mean that, that's what uh, some parents also they have a problem with is that they they always they their kids might think okay this is the only world that you know but as opposed to your your girls is that you've traveled the world and they're they're just their minds are They're exposed much more to so expanded. Many different They're things. just like, wow, yeah. there's so much more. Was this something yeah, that you really wanted to do? Well, it, it came by accident or by coincidence. But like Tony earlier said, you know, um, how would I handle uh, the moment when they are receiving peer pressure? And they have received moments where they're being ostracized or being made to feel different. And then I would sit them down and I would say exactly what you just said, Greg, which is you've traveled the world, you've seen so many different places, what is seen as in here right now, you know that where we just came from, nobody talks about that. And then the singers and the artists that you were listening to over there, you just yeah. brought here nobody knows that yet like you have the knowledge all by yourself you have to know where you can shine and you have to like polish those 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 sweet spots right yeah. and uh, when the peer pressure comes you also have to remember that nowadays back in the day the peer pressure was only the people that we went to class and to school with or the people yeah. that lived beside us today the peer pressure is the whole freaking world right yeah. you go online mm -hmm. and you're not just in competition with the best 
mathematic uh, genius in your class. But if you want to be the best in maths, you don't have to be better than the best in class. You have to be better than the person you can meet online, right? Yeah. So it's a way bigger world for our kids today than it was for us ever. You can't, yeah, you can't save them from that. You can't safeguard them from that. And uh, I want to bring up uh, after the break, uh, how to keep the spark alive. You know, I mean, you have a very interesting uh, relationship. Uh, it's it's not a it's it's not like a a formal marriage. It's not right, a traditional. Right? No, it's not. Yeah. And I want to get into that because not too many people in the Philippines. Um, that. Yeah, yeah, open to that. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm totally for that setup, um, but others probably, obviously, are not. Uh, but I want to know how you got started in it or how it evolved into that and and how do you maintain it how do you maintain that kind of relationship um and we'll get we'll get to that after the break there's a lot of guys off uh, the bino hat line uh, mm. on fiber they're like wow cindy doesn't uh, age mm. yeah she has like a vampire uh, uh, she's got the age of jeans <laughs> they're, they're like age they're like how do you do it uh yeah, what what's yeah, your somebody, uh, even, even, somebody even posted like a photo of you from I think this is in Cantania? I think if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Is it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, could be. <laughs> oh, oh okay. So uh, what's what's your what do you do? I mean, what's your skin regimen? <laughs> well, at the moment I'm wearing makeup and I'm sitting in front of a ring light. I think everybody would look really nice with that kind of routine. When you when you spend a lot of time in front of the camera, you learn tricks, you know, of the trade to look a certain way. Um, I think the the best way to stay young looking and young feeling is to not let things get to you and not let things stress you out. Mm -hmm. That that's relatively hard to do, especially in this day and age. You know, with, you, know with, you mentioned with social media. I mean, social mm -hmm. media, man. Like you just uh, get stressed. Yeah, you you you. Sorry, you, my you camera. Little, go ahead. <laughs> you spend oh, a little oh, bit oh. of time on social media, and like you know, you're you're bound to get some negativity off of it. And you know how how do you end up like kind of filtering that out? or blocking that out. I mean, obviously like in our profession, like you kind of have to be on social media still. Um, well, my numbers uh, in social media aren't that high. I do not have the same kind of followers that people have that stayed in show business all these years. So I left show business 14 years ago and I returned uh, about a year ago. So my, my followers are really the ones that are mostly interested in me and not so much in the glam uh, of, of, the, of the show business world. So I, I think I'm lucky in that way. I mean, of course, higher numbers in followers mean higher talent fees, but at the same time, it means less stress. Again, more money, more problems, right? So mm -hmm. I think that's what helps me there. Um, it's also for me, it's quality over quantity. So mm -hmm. if I have quality followers and I know I do on Instagram, um, I'm way happier than having the quantity of trolls yeah. who, you know, leave mm -hmm. horrible messages behind. Yeah. But on a, on an everyday basis, how, how, how do you keep what Gino said? Little things that, that, irk many of us how are you able to just pacify it or at least uh not let it get to you not just with social media just just in well, life in, it, in my case it's meditation i believe in meditation for me it's like brushing teeth um but it might be something else for you it might be shooting hoops it might be going really fast in your car it might be praying it might be talking to your best friend on a regular basis you know it you have to find your sin and you have to be able to schedule that sin almost for yourself so you know you're gonna replenish maybe it's life coaching maybe it's therapy maybe it's having that one really intelligent brain that's on your side and helps you dissect things because when you become self-aware and you become reflective you know then you understand that your situation isn't a unique case we're all in the same boat uh, your success is my success so there are way less negative feelings that can get to you once you achieve that kind of um, um we all belong Balance. together kind of feeling yeah yeah nice i i love it it's so cool. And speaking of uh, finding See, Tony, Tony is our uh, meditating guru. 
Yeah. He's the meditative one. I'm not a guru. I'm not a guru. <laughs> Talk to I'm not next. You, 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 you mentioned all of it. You know, uh, meditation. So you've got Tony shooting hoops. You've got Slick going fast in their cars. You've got Sam talking to their best friend, a.k.a. my wife, me. Nah, kade yun. Nalusu ka pa yun, ha? Nandiyan ba? Nandiyan ba si Colin? Nandiyan. Nandiyan. Tamo, tamo different stones, ha? Si Gino, si Colleen nandiyan lang. Si Slick, si Doc nilagay sa kabilang kwarto. Doon ka muna sa kabilang kwarto. Uh, Gino, stress ka ba? Stress? Oh, nahulog yung kanda. Uh, oh, Cindy, are you okay? Cindy. Sorry. Are you okay? I'm concerned. You're okay. concerned. You're concerned. You're concerned. I thought you wanted to put the camera under the table. Uh, you know. Um, I wanted to ask, since you talked about having that uh, significant other brain, you know, intelligent brain, uh, let's talk about uh, Dan and um, how yours is a unique story. I know last time that you were on here, we 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 dabbled on on how d- you know your your relationship isn't like majority of the relationships out there. There are some that are like it, uh, but uh, it's rare to find someone that's actually that I know or someone knows that's actually participating in a long term relationship that doesn't have the same. Uh, mold as everyone else and I'm speaking of marriage and um, how did that come about was that uh, from the very start for those that don't know how long is your relationship so far we've been together 17 years okay wow we have two kids look I I have to start from the beginning yeah Um, Mm -hmm. I grew up I became a young adult in the Philippines I moved here when I was 19 I stayed until I was 29 so a good chunk of my time I spent here so I did have the feeling that one day I would wear that white dress and walk down the aisle and say yes in front of a priest and you know say in front of all my friends that this person and me are now a unit of course I do understand those romantic feelings I'm not alien to those Mm. feelings but what happened to me is I found my soulmate i found my partner in a guy who didn't believe in that piece of paper or spending tons of money for other people to create Mm this uh, you know preposterous event in reality yeah because weddings back in the day were you know intimate affairs and nowadays especially if you're a celebrity or a half celebrity like me you have to actually come up with this big big event and there's so much pressure involved and so much um already depth and 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 uh money that you're gonna spend and never gonna get back so um there were all these things and he told me from the very start that he's not traditionally interested in marriage and me and man i was thinking ah, i'm gonna change him that's gonna change mm. you know once we move <laughs> the country once yeah. yeah once i give up my career for him and he sees all my my uh, the sacrifices love, effort, uh, he will yeah, yeah he will come around change his and mind. ask me yeah. 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 so oh. Yeah, and then and then I got pregnant and I thought, okay, he better not ask me while I'm pregnant. I don't want to walk down the aisle while I'm pregnant. Mm. Then my dad passed away, you know, so mm-hmm. he wasn't going to walk me down the aisle anymore. And I got more and more depressed. And Daniel and I never fight. We almost mm. never fight. But during those years, we fought once a month when my period came around. Because for me, when my period comes around, I lose my filter. I um, already have very little filter. So, <laughs> so once I'm close to my period, I'm like losing it's it all. Gone. And yeah. I would once a month, I would fight with him. And I'd be like, We're, we don't have the same last name. Our kid has a different last name to me, to you. This is crazy. Um, we're going to meet people out there and they are going to be introduced to us as Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Mr. Mm-hmm. and Mrs. Garcia. And then this is Daniel Thompson and his girlfriend. You know, I'm yeah. way more than a girlfriend. So I had all of that in my head. So for all the females watching, I understand you, but hear me out. I was rather gonna stay with my soulmates and create my perfect life with the person I choose than lose him over a piece of paper and a party. I mean, seriously, seriously, mm. you know? And I'm not just half Filipina, I'm also half Austrian. And in the Western mm. world, people get divorced like this yep. mm-hmm. yeah. having yeah. a wedding and having a marriage paper doesn't mean that you are going to be committed for life having yeah. children on the other hand is a commitment for life no matter how you want to see it no matter how you turn it you have children together even if you separate you will be in contact for the rest yeah. of your life because mm-hmm. you created kids together so yeah. 
Once I saw that he was committed enough to create a family with me, I had no more doubt. Why am I still fighting with him about a piece of paper, you know? Yeah. So this is um, what, of course, now that I have two daughters, I sometimes wonder, would I prefer that their boyfriend asks for their hand in marriage? Or yeah. am I really that far that I think it's not necessary? You know what I think? It really depends on him and on her, just mm -hmm. on those two people mm -hmm. and nobody yeah. else, you know? And when we were talking about stereotypes earlier, you know, what a ma male is supposed to provide, what a female yeah. is supposed to provide. If we want to break those down, I think marriage is the first thing that should go because marriage has this attachment to it that once we marry, our bank accounts become one, all our belongings become one. And I think that's a recipe for disaster. <laughs> The guys are all married, so they're scratching their heads. They're like, oh my gosh, what? Yeah, that's, why, that's why you're supposed to have oh, separate accounts. Oh, oh my God. Sorry, oh my God. That's, that's why you do that. it. And that's why you have like, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Gino's like, you're still out of my marriage no. so I can just play video games all day. Should I just get out of it? No, I, I actually, I, I actually have a, a, a counterpoint for this, but please go ahead. I, I, I really want to hear out, like, because there are so many questions that are floating through my head. Like, I mean, obviously, yeah. like you mentioned well, earlier, it really does depend on, on you know, how the couple views it, and and in your case, it super works well because you know, um, that's what you both agreed upon, and and I really do see the point of like, I'd rather have. Somebody that I'm not married to, but I'm somebody I'm utterly in love with or whatever. Then somebody that I'm just okay, I'm kind of in love with them, but we're married. Um, but there are so many questions that go through my head, and especially with here in the Philippines, right? I mean, but go ahead, go ahead. Well, you were, you were earlier asking how to keep the spark alive. Hmm. We yeah. in the Western world are so used to the fact that first you're a teenager, then you have your first kiss, then you go second base and third yeah. base, and then you maybe find a boyfriend, then you go steady, then you marry, then you get divorced. You know, that those that's the progression of things. It's yeah. so normal. Divorce is so normal. People get married two, three times. And so by us not marrying, we never got to the point of divorce. And so we also never get comfortable. I keep making effort. He keeps making effort, you know, and yeah. we You're do on your not toes. celebrate Valen mm. yes. we don't celebrate Valentine's mm. Day because for us, we are in each other's life every day. Every day is Valentine's Day. I celebrate him loving me. Mm. I'm grateful for his love and I'm grateful for the freedom that he affords me to be who I am yeah. every day, not just in February. I, I think that that's the important thing for Tony is that that's what he wants to hear that Hopefully other girls uh, take uh, what, what you're saying is because that's what he's looking for uh, yeah. in his life. Uh, someone that, okay, that doesn't need that piece of paper to say that, hey, yeah. we're official. Or yeah. that, that you guys don't even need a, a, a label. A label. I mean, yeah. uh, like, like for, for Tony, I mean, he's not into that. I mean, he'll say it's not a date. It's just us having a meal together. Um, and for yes. other people, for other women, other guys, they were like, no, this is a date. It should be labeled as a date. Oh, it should yeah. be labeled. But it, I think it's, it's deeper. It's deeper than that because it, it's um, as Cindy said. It, it takes two two minds on the same level to understand the depth of mm -hmm. of where I'm coming from. Um, mm -hmm. And and it, it's it's in 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 the Western world, it's the mindset's much different. You know, it's it's yes. security. It, there's a sense of security when you're married. There's a there's the there's a, the the paperwork, the legal paperwork. Uh, that bank accounts. Mm. Yeah, the bank account. So I think that comes into play uh, for women in in with that mindset that have been conditioned in that. Um, but uh, for me, it's a much deeper level. Like if he's gonna stay, he's gonna stay. If she's gonna go, she's gonna go. No matter if you're married, yeah, even or not, if you have you that know? piece of paper. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. and and I think there are more, and and it's fifty fifty. You know, what I mean, um, uh, they came out in North America alone last year. There was a fifty-six percent spike in divorce by women, hmm. by women. Women initiated in twenty twenty, a fifty-six percent. So I mean, if you look at that, I mean, now now women are dictating and they're saying they're speaking up that they no yeah. longer want to be in a toxic relationship. They no yeah. longer need a dick to support them. You know yeah. what I mean? And and as much as we want to have that family, that's what everyone wants. And and I get, I get where Cindy's coming from is that piece of paper. Uh, uh, it doesn't define you that your family is perfect. 
You know, yeah. I mean, you don't want the perfect marriage, but at least you want someone that will take care of you and your kids, and it'll be a loving family, whether you have that piece of paper or not. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think at the end of the day, it's the quality of the relationship, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. which is rare. I, I, I still want to say something. Uh, mm. You know, sometimes when you look for that person to marry, and you're so gun set, like so you're so gun hole on on achieving this wedding, you might uh, let go of the person who was really right for you and keep yeah. searching, and then settle. You might settle, and that's when you end up having resentment later on, and that's when mm-hmm. you then look for divorce, and you think that you're in a toxic relationship, and you are. Res- responsible for it as well and not just your partner because you agreed to enter that relationship and you know it's like psychologically we all have contracts we all make deals with each other you know and um, the deal that I made with Daniel was that we were always gonna build on our foundation and be honest with each other and I think that today 17 years later and with my two girls I can honestly say that those three people are my most favorite people in the world I would much rather spend any moment of my day with them than with anyone else and on a Sunday if you infiltrate my family on a Sunday you're either belong to my family or I'm pissed at you for being there because I want my time I love them so much so I know so many people who have settled just because of a wedding just because of a marriage or maybe even for the bank account the guy had later on created children they don't really are into the guy they're not into anymore the relationship is not working anymore and so maybe five six years down the line of their marriage marriage they're unhappy and I think yes I would have loved a wedding yes I would have loved to Mm. see myself in a wedding dress and I've seen myself in wedding dresses for you know pictorials and commercials and movies and whatnot but for him I would have wanted that but I'm also okay with not getting it because I have him Uh yeah yeah because that's your unit so you're good that's all you need in life I a mean, lot of women, yeah, it's, it's actually yeah, finding that that match yeah. with that person who, you know, mm-hmm. the same mindset. Yeah. And I think at the end of the day, it's making each other feel secure. Regardless, yeah. you know, of the piece of paper, regardless of whatever your label you want to call yourselves, mm-hmm. wife, girlfriend, uh, boyfriend, fiance, whatever. And that's it's, hard, Sam. It's, it's hard feeling. to do that in the Philippines, diba? It's hard to do it that. It is. Say, oh, oh, we're, so, we're, so, we're so, so dead it's so in, our, in our ways. In, uh, yeah, it's yeah. in our culture no matter what. Uh, I and, mean, and, because like Cindy, she's, you know, like mine with, with Daniel. I mean, it's it works for them. I mean, yeah. it's not going to work for everyone, but, but it, it works it for them. It didn't work. It didn't work at the start. It was a conditioning that she had to understand and see from a uh, a different perspective. Perspective, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, she she was raised in basically in the Philippines, the culture of the Philippines, where sige yeah. ikakasal ako, white Get dress, married, yeah. And, and, and especially with a kid, that, right? even whenever even when you were having yeah. a kid, you were even like, shit, paano to? Well, what's what's the family name? All these, you know, the mm-hmm. pressure from yeah. Dubai. When people ask, oh, so what's what's the uh, family name of the kid, the right? All uh, the cheese or what's your and label? Oh. It's always like that, the right? I was I was kicked off a plane once because the child I had with me didn't carry the last same last name as me. See? And instead yeah. of ask mm. yes, instead of asking me, they kicked me off the plane and only tried uh, let me explain to them once the plane had left and I was back at the check-in counter. That's crazy. And uh, wow. that was crazy. Yes, and I was gone for a month. I was traveling for a month. I was visiting my dad because he was very ill, and I was there with my baby. She was, I think. Four, four or five months old, my eldest, yeah. and uh, I had her in a baby carrier. So you know how you get psyched up when you travel long distance. You're yeah. packed. You said bye to everyone. You've got your papers. You've got the baby. Ah, oh, you're sweating. And then they kick you off the plane. I was vivid. I was. Yeah. I oh, called yeah, Dan sure. and I was like, "You fucking asshole!" This is your fault. Can you can you make the last name your last name and his last name, or they didn't? accept that it, where um in austria my name my my kids are called uh thompson corletto so my name is corletto his name is thompson and my hmm. kids are called thompson corletto so none of us carry the same last name except for the siblings okay. and oh, i still think okay. that's unnecessary i still think that there should be an option at the government where you can state that you are a living community and yeah. i think they started doing that now because of the lgbtq rights right yeah. mm-hmm. and i think we might look into this very soon simply because we don't want our kids to go through school and have always to explain why they have a different last name to yeah. us. Yeah. 
Actually, I think yeah. that's one of the one of the uh, reasons also why um, a lot of people elect to get married here because a lot of our laws are very very outdated. I've I've personally met um, uh, a, a couple who have been together for the longest longest time. Like they're they're both senior citizens, uh, and one of them passed away, but they never got married. So what happened was under, under if I'm not mistaken, under Philippine law, um, as long as you're not married. Whatever, whatever property, whatever material things that you do own, it doesn't go to your girlfriend or your boyfriend. It automatically goes to the family. And these are, these are, these are, you know, properties that they bought together with their own money. And when one of them passed away, the other one was left with nothing because it went to the family. And it just so happened that that family wasn't in good terms with them because it wasn't a relationship that they approved of. So they never even gave anything. You know, so wow. isa kawawa. So I think that's, that's also bad. one of the reasons why, like, un- until we can, until the laws start catching up with how people are living nowadays, more people are going to be forced into, you know, even if, mm-hmm. um, I'm even if I'm not a super advocate of getting married, let's get married just for, you know, to make it easier for for everybody. And I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, stuff like this gets complicated, and and you know, people are forced into doing things that they're not necessarily like super into. But Cindy, how how do you how do you did not how did that incident not trigger you towards your hubby Daniel? How did how did that incident, you know? If you would have been there when he picked up the phone, you would have said it triggered me a lot. <laughs> it triggered me. <laughs> okay. It properly triggered and, and, me. Yeah. And moving forward, when it comes to finances, how do you uh, divide? How do you? How does how do you guys support each other and 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 make it work on a everyday basis? Knowing that for seventeen years now, it's working. Uh, maybe there are tips that you can give uh, when it comes down to the monetary, the finances. Yeah. Well, to be very honest with you, it's super funny that we ended up in fact having only one money pot now and everything we earn we put in that pot because we've become so minimalist that our expenses are really just the necessary you know like the food the rent the travel expenses it. the school so mm-hmm. there is actually no no necess- necessity anymore to keep things mm-hmm. separate by now we're so much a unit even without that piece of paper that um it has never actually caused any problems so far. And for example, I'm here right now working and he's home with the kids. And yeah. it's amazing that he is such a world traveled, intelligent, educated, kind hearted man who it's not above him or underneath him, beneath him mm-hmm. to stay home for five weeks with two kids. Yeah. And you know, and that's not easy to do. Was, yeah. No, oh, that's, that's not easy and to do. He, if he was grab it, grab it, Cindy. That was, that's a, that's amazing. I I don't know how you did it. Yeah. It must but, but guys, the power of the P, the power of the P. But <laughs> no, but, but guys, listen. If I was the guy traveling, if I was Mr. Lawyer traveling yeah. the world for five weeks, and I'm leaving Cindy with the kids behind, nobody would bat an eyelash because it's normal yeah. for the mm-hmm. female yeah. to stay behind for five weeks with the two girls. But yeah. as soon as it's him, it's outrageous. He's a yeah. genius. It's amazing. So even though I give him a lot of compliments and I tell him how grateful I am, he always reminds me, this should be normal. I'm yeah. having an excellent bonding time with my girls, you know? Yeah. So he appreciates and is grateful for that as well. I think yeah. we just really match. We're just really, uh, we're a good match. That's just no, but plus yeah. I, I think now, e- even in the U.S., there, there's a lot of uh, guys that are now staying home. They're, 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 they're yeah. the, the ones watching. And it's nice. I, I mean, like uh, when when I saw it, it's like, hey, look at that. At least he has he, he has the girl dead time and they're, they're good. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, oh. 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 oh the, right. the masseuse. The masseuse is there. Oh, the masseuse. <laughs> oh, no. oh. Room service. Room service. Oh, nice. <laughs> I got to see my shorts. So <laughs> I, will, I, will, I am wearing. I am wearing bottoms. <laughs> oh, nice, nice, nice. You have a, a one of a kind setup, and I'm sure a lot of women all over the world would love yeah. to to have that same setup where. The guy understands and is loyal, uh, because if he's not married, or even if he is married, he not oh, everyone man. is loyal. Mm, yeah. Even, even uh, I would have that argument oh, that some married guys, people are even more, you know, susceptible. You, but, no, you, you have to Makati. understand. Yeah, 
Mm. Now, there is there's one thing that you have to understand from the very, very start of your relationship. You are not cheating on your partner. You are cheating on yourself. Mm. If you are cheating yeah. while you are building a foundation with someone else, that foundation will crack. And yeah. that's your fault because you went and cheated on yourself. You have to realize that you're not cheating ever on anyone else. It's you you're cheating on. Thanks. I couldn't agree more. Actually. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I always tell that. Oh, I think that mindset really, is different. Oh, it's hard. Oh, so it's, it's really hard your mindset. It's, yeah. Mm. It's really hard for, for others to understand that. that, that um, and, and yeah, they that's go a big concept. Or, or for others, they'll even twist it and they're like, well, at least I'm just inflicting pain on myself because I'm just cheating on myself. <laughs> you know? There, <laughs> but I'm, I'll, but I'll be okay after this. Yeah, I'll be okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. You know? So what do you consider uh, yeah, cheating no. though? City, since you don't have the 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 so-called everyday relationship, the the, the mold of of the Western society, uh, what do you consider cheating? I, I'm curious. Um, Liking photos. Uh, cheating starts with tongue kissing i believe so um Remember nice. some yeah. tongue I kissing, think, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree, I think, agree. Uh, because flirting and being charming is part of my job. Uh, yeah. And even tongue kissing, if I was in a, in a movie, right, as an actor, that would also be part of my job. Yeah. So yeah. I think um, um, the the charming, the, the flirtatious kind of, um, you know, uh, being cheeky Energy. that's yeah. that's all yeah that's all part that's all okay with us um i think we also made an agreement daniel and i to tell each other when we're falling out of love and that also applies when you can feel you're falling for someone else so if you feel mm. you're falling for someone else you have to catch yourself and you have yeah. to stop mm. you know contact break contact and you have to refocus on your partner and say like come on let's go away let's let's do something and yeah. Your partner has to be open to receive that criticism openly, you know, like you haven't been looking after me. I feel neglected. Yeah. Uh, what can we do? So I think it's really important to keep communication open and not have that ego yeah. between the two of you because it, you're not fighting against each other. You're fighting for each other. Yeah. That's actually mm-hmm. like a really interesting point. And uh, it's, I mean, obviously it's a lot harder to, to, to practice yeah. it rather than to say it because i mean a lot of people will take it the wrong way like let's just say oh i'm i've i've been feeling neglected some people will get defensive and say like oh what do you mean like uh, how am i neglecting you i'm doing so much for you blah 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 and especially that part where you say like you kind of have to catch yourself when you feel like you're falling out of love that is such a hard thing to to, to tell somebody that you're so yeah, yeah face to face mm-hmm. uh, yeah exactly and, and so it's something that-, that maybe that person would say that you know what i'm actually feeling again I'm, yeah. you know, I, I'm alive. Yeah. And that, that, it's that would your be ego. Mm-hmm. It's your ego being stroked. Anytime a new relationship ship happens, it's the courtship, it's the ego. Those people are not going to behave with you like that once they're 20 years into a relationship with you. It's the start of something new. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. ego it's the stroked. excitement. It has, mm-hmm. it's, oh, yeah. Yes, it's mm-hmm. infatuation. It has nothing to do with love, with the real love. You know, the foundation that I was talking about earlier that receives yeah. cracks. You know, um, if you if you value your own work that you've put into a relationship, you're not going to be deterred by simply your ego being stroked. Come on, come on. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it takes a certain, of course, strength as a person as well. You know, your character, your morals, your values have to be in place or else you're easily going to fold. Perhaps, yeah. right? Konting, konting lande here and there. Oh, konting stroke lang. Oh, 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 stroke. Oh my gosh. Years, in the 17 years, <coughs> yeah. have you ever, obviously it's not going to be perfect, but has there been a point where, ooh, there's a guy or, or Dan has a girl that, you know, that well, he finds. Well, I don't know about Daniel. You know, I, I, cannot, I cannot speak for him, but um, for example, now that we're apart right now while I'm working here, we, we see each other on video call every day. And 
it might sound very cheesy and most of you might not believe me, but I look at him and I see the most handsome person. When I Ooh. hear his voice, his voice, his, the baritone uh-huh. of his voice, the deep voice gives me butterflies. You know? so I'm, sitting, I'm sitting here miles away in Manila yeah. and he talks to me and I'm like, mm-hmm, I'm getting butterflies. <laughs> yes, yes. And see, the thing is, so his tone of voice gives me butterflies. I think he's handsome. And another thing that has never changed is I can smell him when I smell. He is the best smelling person I've ever, ever smelled. Like there is from I would never give him up. Never for nothing in the world. And so mm-hmm. you could stroke my ego. You could be the most handsomest guy in front of me with the most money right now. I don't care. He is my soul person. I would never do anything to hurt that that person. Nice. That wonderful. is amazing. That, that is, is amazing. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I Dropping can smell knowledge. Him. I can yeah. smell him and, from and here. If he, was, if he were tuned in right now, I'm pretty sure like his ego has been completely stroked. Stroked. It yeah. has been yeah. stroked. Yeah. Over, and over, and over, over and over and over again. Over and over again. Uh, yes. Let me stroke <laughs> that. Let me stroke that some more. He, he's and his mind right totally blown. <laughs> Um, I still want to ask you guys a question before before we stop talking about this I want to ask you a question because you were talking earlier about how you sometimes need to look somewhere else right and for me it's like this now with with Daniel especially Um, he lets me go on these trips he loves to see me blooming happy with a new haircut with a new style with a new project with people hanging out that bring out my creative side because when he sees me shine he was remember he was reminded why he fell in love with me yeah. in the first place and so when you're saying that it's like this territory she belongs to me and i can see her but no one else should see her that's a, such a limited view because you're also yeah. depriving yourself of seeing your partner in the best light possible right so i think that territory feeling where you don't allow her to be for the world and just for you is like depriving yeah. you as well mm-hmm. also the best version of yeah. your partner and it, and it, 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 it's super selfish as well. I mean, wouldn't you want your, I mean, obviously, like, if let's just say being blooming, being creative, being out there, being um, an extroverted individual, if you, or see that it, if you see that that, you know, makes your wife or your girlfriend happy, like, why would you want to rob them of that happiness, right? I mean, if you think about it. I think a lot of people feel and have that sense that when marriage starts, life changes, and and it, it 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 shouldn't be that way. Uh, your priorities may change, but you as a person, as a as an individual, should continue to thrive as 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 a person, uh, and then collectively thrive as well. It it, it goes hand in hand. Um, and a lot of people don't see that. A lot of people let themselves go. A lot of people feel that uh, you know it, they become more like possessive. Mm. Yeah, it's a burden. <laughs> Um, it's, uh, they, they, they shut off that, that zest of, of, of life. Uh, I'm not saying you, you shut off being single because you're in a relationship, but you, 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 you keep that switch on for, for that zest for life. Um, and that's, 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 that's my philosophy is just be who you are. Uh, and, and a lot of it has to do with attachment. A lot of us aren't, aren't, are afraid of, of losing that person and and if you're coming from that place of of losing someone that means it's there's something that's missing there's something mm-hmm. that needs to work on in 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 a relationship <clears throat> and that's why i've never been so ups- you know i mean when someone leaves or someone goes in my life it's not like i i it's it's not like i i you're gonna crumble I, into nothingness <laughs> yeah i mean they they were there for a purpose and then uh, that's it and if 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 it is going to happen, it's going to happen. I think Cindy is a is is one in a million, probably, but it can happen. Yep. You know, um, yep. it, it just takes two people to understand um, and and to communicate because she wasn't for it. She was never that person, but she understood the deeper meaning and 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 they worked at it and it, it works for her. Seventeen years. Mm-hmm. Um, so mm-hmm. it's not for everyone. Obviously, because of of society, it's it's hard to do what she's doing yeah. in the Philippines. Yeah. What seventeen years? Ola ka pang asawa? Ano ba yan? Dalawang anak mo? I mean, you would hear that if you were living in the Philippines. Definitely, yeah, that's classic. Oh, yeah. Classic. Yeah. Dalawang asawa, hindi kinasal. No. But uh, I guess now it's just easier for hers because oh, you know she's diba? they're living their life uh, mm-hmm. back home. So yeah. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's actually you know it's it's a uh, it's your peace of mind. It's your happiness. You know, I don't think anybody or any cheese miss anybody can. Even if somebody somebody says anything about that, 
at the end of the day, it's where you're at peace. You yes. know, where, where, what makes you happy. Yeah. If you have a happy, strong relationship, people can say whatever they want. But if you go home and you are the happiest person with your relationship, with the person you're with, regardless of labels or whatever that is, I don't think you're even going to mind. You're not even going to care about mm-hmm. what people say. Because yeah. you're just, you know, content and happy inside. Yeah, you dictate your own happiness. <laughs> and everyone else's opinion doesn't matter. Because, yeah. you, you know, you're going to get affected if you, if it's the other way around. If that's your insecurity and somebody triggers it, like, para, ah, teka, no, but, no, not, not married, then you go, ay, teka, masakit, it, diba? But if you're, if you're happy, but, you're good. First of all, like, first, like, when, when you said, um, I agree with you, you know, you have to first grow yourself and your partner has to grow. Both of you grow parallel, right? Um, if you grow parallel, you go, you will go into infinity. But if you're so focused on each other, your paths will draw across and you will, you will split ways. You'll go far from each other. So mm-hmm. I think you should really, both of you should grow and you should grow together, of course, you know, but don't deprive your partner of growth. That's the one thing. The other thing also, you have to also understand that if you are fearful of someone leaving, if that's the attachment thing that you're struggling with, fear is the real opposite of love. It's not hate. You have to love someone first before you can hate them. The real opposite of love is fear. And there are so many emotions that are based in fear. Like you were just saying, insecurity. Insecurity is based in fear. They're going to talk about me. They're not going to see me for who I am. You know, so whenever you, you catch yourself in your head having a fearful thought, try to kick it out as if it was a hateful thought. We all know that hate is wrong. Yeah. Fear is wrong as well. So, so all the women Cindy, that you, hate Sam. So all the women that hate hmm. Sam really oh. love Sam. <laughs> Some in, in a point, yes, they were triggered. Something, <laughs> something triggered. But Cindy, how, how think, about the how about the women that fear Tony Tony in a certain way when no. uh, oh. when, when, no. when he takes uh, her to bed? It, it, is that much. fear okay? It's where they much. push that away? I'm pushing Tony Tony's fear away. Here. And then I'm pulling it back, and then I'm pushing it away. Bring back, bring back the fear, toes. Bring back the fear. <laughs> don't don't mistake respect with fear. Okay, respect is something else. You, you can respect love lovingly. You don't have to fear. Fear really is not a good emotion. And for all the females watching, if you have females around you who foster jealousy. That's also a negative emotion. Get rid of that person in your life. Stop following them. Stop socializing with them. Any Mary person Pinoy. who fosters Mary anything Pinoy. negative yeah. in you, just get rid of them. You know, like this this year, this past year pandemic, I think the main message that I've received in the last year is that stop living a mediocre life. Live to the fullest potential that you can achieve. If you want to wear your freaking gown you know your ball gown to the to the mercury drugstore then then do so go if, for if it if you mm-hmm. yes if you want to put makeup on every day then do that and if you don't want to ever put makeup on again then do that too like whatever just as long as it's not hateful or fearful or you know rooted in in fear or hate just go for it live your yeah, life so you. if i want if i want to buy a motorcycle go of I'm course gonna buy it yes yeah. no fear no fear too short <laughs> good luck <Yeah>. <laughs> Can you call your wife and say, F you, I am buying that bike. No, 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 F you. Did, no I, hate, did no I just hate. make all females of the Philippines hate me? Is this, is this uh, the nah, interview that's finally going to nah, turn on me? No, nah. yeah. nah, you're just opening the minds. I mean, yeah. because they, they probably did think of that option that they had. They, they, they always thought, okay, this is the way it has to be, but... There, there, there is, there is another way. I mean, because like what Tony was saying is that you've taken it, uh, your relationship to another level. You've taken, yeah. say, your your minds to another level and also your heart. So it's something that that everyone is learning. I mean, a lot of people uh, just off Twitter and uh, you know the Facebook, they're like, wow. I mean, it, it was good to hear from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Yeah. I mean, it's good to hear from you, is because they probably also had these questions that we asked, and yeah. you you totally answered them. Thank you, uh, Cindy. It was very enlightening and uh, so much, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. much juice. I got so much juice from this uh, interview. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, all, it's always nice. It's always nice to see uh, uh, someone that that sees uh, somewhat my point of view. It, it's really hard to 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 see yeah, it across. because of the culture. Yeah, the, the social, uh, the social structure of of how 
our world is. It's kind of uh, a mold that everyone follows, and and yeah. I, I don't yeah. fit into that mold. Um, and it's also well, really nice. What most people don't know about you is that you're more spiritual than they think. I think that's what you and I have in common, that we're both spiritual people, spiritual spirits, you know. And I think that most people don't actually know that about you. I didn't know that about you until I had that talk with you last time we saw. And I realized you are, for a Filipino guy, you're very spiritual. Yeah, yeah well. And I don't, yeah. Mean, I don't mean religious because religious most Filipino guys are, no? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm yeah, far yeah. from I'm far from the religious one. <laughs> uh, that trust me. <laughs> he, he's a different trust, kind of spirit. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't belong into any sect or any religion if I knew how my life was outside Boys Night Out. Definitely. <laughs> but it's also really nice to to honestly to, to hear a female speak about this because like I feel like a lot of females, especially here in the Philippines, are so um, kind of just stuck in this in this. In this certain mode right. that that yeah and and a lot of because of how how our culture is because of how religion is are, are stuck in that rut because they don't see any other options and it's nice that you opened up about this because now you know people will see that oh okay here it can work pale. like it doesn't need to be the traditional way of doing things but it still works well for them and you know it's nice to have that avenue it's, actually gino it's very empowering yeah. It's very empowering yeah. having someone like her. But obviously, you have to have that partner that sees the, the same, same way. Yeah. Same yeah. way yeah. And, you know, and not to say that there's anything wrong with getting married, obviously. Because, I mean, that's still, no, like, no. you know, that's your prerogative. If you both yeah. see it that way, then great. Go and get married. But if you're both not into the whole marriage thing, then, you know, fine. Make it work. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Uh, Cindy, you know, do, you I, have I have a, do you have a sister? I don't. <laughs> okay. I don't. I'm uh, uh, Slick's I'm asking if you have a sister. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hey, I, I know that she's an only child, man. <laughs> Slick knows example. me since I was 19, <laughs> since, the, since the moment I arrived in Manila. We are yeah, surprised. No, you go way back. Go way back. Before we say bye tonight, I just want to say uh, another thing. In the past, I would have been ashamed talking about this topic because I would feel that uh, other females would maybe look down at my decision or, you know, uh, feel me, make me feel excluded. But yeah. uh, what you were just saying, I, I totally agree with you. I'm so happy that today, I instead of feeling ashamed about my story, I think it is empowering and sharing mm -hmm. it with all of you and hopefully with some other females listening. That they, they, I, I do want to be there for them. I do want to, I do want to be there. And Great. it's a brush of fresh air, considering you know the changing times, and everybody's trying to you know evolve and find their place. Very mm -hmm. uh, refreshing to hear your insights. And uh, I know uh, there, there are a lot Sam, of there, Sam's a lot scratching of his head. Sam's like, shoot, Sarah, di na ako bumili ng Sunday. Pare ni. Pede palato. Sabi ko pede palato. Pede palato. Pede palato. Propose, propose pa. Esa, esa, yung skip mo pa. Azuma. Ay nako, minais. Would you be open? Open minded ka ba? Open minded ka ba? Esa, lay out my plans mo na. Just listen to listen to me, and then after. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to ask Cindy, what about the ring? The ring. Um, um, I think I told you last time no, that there was, a, there was a time where I wore a ring, a ring that yeah. he did gift me as a gift. And I wore it so that if I was, especially when I was living in South America, I was mm -hmm. moving in the expat circles and all the expat wives would have their rock on their finger, right? And uh, so that they would stop asking or inquiring, yeah. I put that ring on the left hand on my ring finger just because. So I had those years and those were the years I was talking with you guys about earlier when I still once a month would fight about the topic so that right. at that time it still affected me but by now yeah. Mm. It, it, it affected yeah. me so much I because the, all the guys are married so I bought one myself and I just put it on so when everyone <laughs> I asked so when Whatever, you, me, you had that if, even before we all got married exactly <laughs> <laughs> man you were the first one to wear a ring I put it on so I don't I put it on so I don't I don't feel left out because you Whatever. know the guys are all, you know you, you love being left out in this circle <laughs> exactly <laughs> so we're talking about you love to be left out like we would ring, have to pay that, good that money so to expensive. see you <laughs> I, I want to see Sam. Sam, where's your ring? I want to. I want to see Sam. Wala pa. Wala pa. 
<laughs> after the wedding pa. After the wedding. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, because we were talking about Netflix earlier, on Netflix, you can find, um, I'm not sure what the title was, I think History of the of the Engagement Ring. There mm. was a time where the producers of, of diamonds would keep the diamonds back so that they would have more uh, value, value on the market. Yeah. And yes, and they would also bombard the public with um, images and commercials that actually started the tradition that you had yeah. to buy her a diamond ring for engagement. So this is all manipulation by yeah. people who want to earn money off of you. So you're yeah. actually falling into a trap of spending money that maybe you can't even afford. I mean, there are people Malik, taking out loans Malik to buy an engagement Malik ring. <laughs> maybe well, Sa- Sam can afford, don't worry. He- he's good. Uh, <laughs> He's good. Mga 10 years <laughs> yata, babayarin yan. You probably paid that with cash. Like, no, years, like, okay, tayo sing sing. May right mid ba nito? <laughs> hey, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, so Cindy. much. Yeah, yeah. For, for hanging thank out with us. Thank you for having me, guys. See you and, next time. Uh, oh, where can, where can people so, catch you? Yeah. Like, uh, if, if they want to get in touch with oh, you or course. anything like that? Um, everybody listening right now, please follow me on Instagram. You can find me under Cindy underscore Corletto. And of course, on Facebook, there's also a fan page if you want to follow me there as well. All right. Keep, uh, keep inspiring and uh, keep talking about it because uh, the more you talk about it, the more it becomes a normal thing. And uh, I think a lot of women would love to hear your, your story. So we'll get you back on before you leave. You, you're here for a month, right? I'm here for another three weeks. There you okay. go. We'll get you back on the All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.